Hey guys, Wade here from Shipwreck Table Co. Uh, I am the owner and head builder of the company, and today we're gonna to be making an epoxy river table. For materials, we got maple burl. We're gonna be using tinted epoxy with this one as well. I think it's gonna pair really nicely. This table is being made for Andy over at Motion Gray. I'm excited to announce that we have a little bit of a collaboration going on. A little bit about myself. I'm actually a full-time firefighter. I've been making my tables for about five years now. Uh, I learned from my father, who is a timber framer, who also builds tables on the side as well. And I got a little bit of a motto that um, if I wouldn't put a table in my house, then I wouldn't sell it to a customer. We're gonna get started on this table. I'm gonna walk you through basically step-by-step -step on how I make an epoxy table. Come join me, we're gonna get started. All right guys, so here's a slab here. Basically what I did is I just took all the bark off here and around here as well. Um, this was all a big piece of dead wood that I hollowed out. Right here on the live edge, lots of bark. I still got a little bit to go, so I'll show you what I've got to do on that. You just take a drill and a wire brush and you just basically knock off all the bark on the side here. And yeah, this was all filled with bark and um, I removed that. So you can see the curl in the wood, the bumpiness. And yeah, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna do a little bit more of this. So now we're gonna make our mold. So this table has to be roughly, I'd say 60 inches long. So what I normally do is I make my mold about an inch longer on the one side and an inch longer on the other side. So I'm just gonna make my marks on my board here and I cut out the tracks off and uh, yeah, this is how you build the mold here. Uh, so now that we have our slab wood all cut out, we have our mold cut to size to approximately what we want our final dimensions to be for the table. Now all we gotta do is we gotta make the mold waterproof. And basically all you gotta do there is you take the walls that you're screwing on to the base and you run a bead of silicone along the bottom where you're gonna screw it in. What that does, it just makes it watertight. Uh, it ensures that you're not gonna have any leaks. <laughs> All right guys, Wade here. Uh, we have the table all ready to pour. We have the wood inside of the mold. We have it all clamped down. Um, I just mixed up some epoxy over there. Um, I only use eco epoxy. I find it's the, the best epoxy on the market. This is what I like about eco epoxy. It does what it's supposed to do. So when you mix your hardener and your epoxy together, uh, you should get bubbles raised to the top. And then uh, this is where the fun part comes in. You just take a torch and uh, you just pop them with the torch. And this is gonna, keep you from getting bubbles in your table when it hardens. All right, so here we go. All right guys, so we're just getting ready to pour the epoxy now. Um, I typically leave my epoxy in the buckets for about 45 minutes to really let those air bubbles get to the top. Uh, after 45 minutes, you can take your torch and you can pop them all again. And at last, time to pour. Now we have the table all flattened. Um, there's a few different ways you can flatten a table. The first one is you can build a sled and you can use your router and just gradually go along to flatten the table. The second option is you can take it to a professional woodworking shop if you have one in your area. You now when I'm done, my table is perfectly flat. Uh, so next, as you can see here, uh, map a burl. After you flatten it, it has tiny little hole marks in the wood from the burl. So what I do is I just go along, I use a quick curing epoxy, fill those holes, and then after you're done, you sand them out. So now we're gonna sand out the little epoxy marks that I just put in, and then we're gonna square up the table with the track saw, and this table is gonna be ready to go to sand up. 
and we're gonna sand it all the way up to 400 grit. So stay tuned and check this out. All right, so now we got all the epoxy holes sanded out. Um, there's still one or two pinholes uh, that I'm gonna go back over with. I'm gonna use some CA glue to fill those because they're very, very small. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna fill that and we're gonna sand them out and then we're gonna get to uh, squaring up this table. All right, so we took the router and did a nice chamfer edge on this one. Had this nice detailed edge. We're now going to start sanding. Make this thing all right, pretty. guys. So we got the table all flattened. We have it cut to size. We have it routered. Uh, we got all those little tiny holes filled in with some fast gear and epoxy. Uh, so that's all done. Now we're gonna get to sanding. We're gonna have this thing sanded up to maybe a 400 grit. Uh, depends how that feels. May even go to 600. Uh, and then we're gonna put some oil on. My sanding techniques are usually uh, 80 grit, 100 grit, 120, 150, 180, 220, 320, 400. And then if I want a little more sheen, a little smoother, I'll even sometimes uh, go to 600. Uh, but we're gonna put two coats of finish on it. We're gonna apply a coat of finish. We're gonna wait uh, two days, let it fully cure up, break it with an 800 grit, do a second coat, and this thing will be ready to roll. So we're gonna get sanding now. And uh, yeah, we're ready to rock. So we got the first coat of finish on. We're gonna give it a few days. It's gonna let it cure up. Looking pretty nice already though. We're gonna put a second coat on just to add protection. And we'll put that on in about two days. But yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. Pretty excited.